Hello you guys, Abraxas here, and uh, I'm going to be playing Space Engine, doing another exploration video, and uh, yeah, I was just flying around looking at random nebulas inside the Milky Way, and who would have thought I'd look in the Carina Nebula and I find a Wolf Riot Star. Uh, I haven't actually seen one of these in the game yet, so let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, where was that? That was that bright one right there. So it's in the center of like, okay, I don't know if that's like a plume of like something the, the star is ejecting or something like that. Star like very recently exploding next to it, but let's go ahead and slowly zoom into this object and see what we can like find out about it. Okay, this is insanely bright. I'm trying to slow down a bit so I don't fly past it. I uh, I can't see it. <laughs> It's apparently a binary system. I'm looking at. Let me. I think I see. Oh wait, I see two objects there. Yeah, I can see two objects. Let's uh. Let's decrease the exposure and reduce the magnitude a bit so it gets rid of this flare. Okay, so we definitely have something here. Let me slow down and zoom in. Okay, so we have something going on. What is this? This is a blue main sequence star, and here is the Wolf Riot star. Oh, flew past it. So I don't, I don't really know much about Wolf Riot stars other than they are actually uh, very rare in this game, and I've just been asked to go and view one, and here it is. It looks very much like this uh, blue supergiant here. Let me slow down and just slowly fly towards it. So I don't know what's exactly special about these. I'm going to have to look into it for sure. It gets very detailed as I get closer to it. But let's see what I can figure out. Um, this, temp <laughs> this star's temperature is actually very high. It has a surface temperature of about 28,000 degrees, while our sun only has like a surface temperature of like 5,000. Oh wow! This blue main sequence star next to it has a surface temperature of 52,000 degrees Celsius. It is a di oh yeah, it's a diameter of 0 0.2 astronomical units, so that's actually a, uh, pr actually 0 0.22. That's actually a pretty, uh, big star. That is definitely big. Um, I will be right back. I'm actually gonna look into a little bit of information about Wolf Riot stars. Okay, so I have the wiki up for the, uh, Wolf Riot star. And what I am hearing is Wolf Riot stars are often abbreviated as WR stars are a yeah heterogeneous okay set of stars with an unusual spectra showing prominent broad emission lines of highly ionized helium and nitrogen or carbon okay so the spectra indicate a very high surface temperatures of 30,000 kelvin to around 200,000 kelvin so these are incredibly hot stars and this cloud outside of this star that we were looking at it's consisting of some type of uh, matter, such as like helium, nitrogen, or carbon, apparently. And that's what's being ejected out. This is apparently a normal stage for supermassive stars. And this is just like uh, one of its stages, I guess. So, let's see. All wolf riot stars are highly luminous objects due to their high temperatures thousands of times the biometric luminosity of the sun. That would explain why this lens flare is incredibly strong even with the luminosity turned down. A significant proportion of WR stars are surrounded by nebulosity associated directly with the star. Not just the normal background nebulosity associated with any massive star forming region, but and not a planetary nebula formed by a post-AGB star. The nebulosity presents a variety of forms and classifications Many original cataloged as planetary nebulae, and sometimes only a careful multi wavelength study has distinguished a planetary nebula around a low mass AGB star. Okay, so what it's essentially saying is. 
there's always a nebula around a wolf of Ryan star, which, uh, so we have this plume of gas that is shooting out of this region, but it's also within a nebula that I believe is, oh, whoops, let me fix the luminosity real quick. So let me slow down and we have this sitting inside the Karina nebula. And I think it's in a sub nebula in here. No, it doesn't appear to be. But nonetheless, if you want to look this up for yourself, it is star Karina uh, A. So it's right here in the Karina nebula. I'm sure you can find it. It's very visible. It is essentially the brightest object in this nebula. And I've actually explored stars in this nebula many times, and uh, I'm shocked I have not actually seen this. <laughs> But, uh, definitely a beautiful star. I was talking about, you can see, like, the red around the, uh, gas that is shooting out right there. And this is apparently something that has lost its shell, but it's still burning hydrogen at the core, I believe is what this wiki said. So, that would explain why it is so incredibly hot on the surface. Nonetheless, an awesome find, and my first time actually seeing a Wolf Riot star in the game. Anyways, uh, let's see. Okay, my bad. I was actually recording this video at 30 FPS at the beginning. It is now 60, it will render in 60. It's just that first portion with the uh, Wolf Riot star is gonna be at 30 FPS. Sorry about that. Um, so this is another request from the YouTube username, This Is Not Interesting. He asked me to visit RN84091372.9. I can't, for the life of me actually get this to load like here i go i'll put it in the search function right now there it is yeah if i hit okay on this it, it just says object not found what i found out is if i remove this nine here and actually just go to this object very far away very very far away this is just something completely random there is actually a cool planetary nebula which is something i've actually not seen in the game so on the same subject of like Wolf Riot stars, here is a planetary nebula. What this is created from is essentially a star like our sun that has gone through its uh, hydrogen like burning phase and starts burning helium and then extends and then the outer shell of the star actually just explodes and basically ejects from the star. And that's essentially what this is, just a tiny nebula. It's not going to last very long like the other nebulas. But this is actually the first time I've seen a planetary nebula in the game, and it looks really interesting. You can see like a little sphere right here, and then like uh, much cooler energy just kind of flowing out outwards. This is not going to be as big as any other nebula. Uh, as you can tell, it is rather small. The diameter of it is apparently 0 0.6 light years. So this one's relatively old and already cooling off. If it was to expand, it would probably go to about this far away. But nonetheless, that is a really cool find. And what's cool about it is this is actually a uh, IC galaxy. So this is actually a galaxy that has been observed and cataloged, which uh, for the hell of it, let's go to its center star cluster over here. And let's see this black hole. Let's slow it down a little bit. All right, so I should be in line with the black hole that's in the center of this galaxy, which I do believe is this blue light right here. Because you cannot just visit a galaxy without, you know, seeing its black hole. All right, so it's rendered in. Let's go ahead and slow down and slowly pan over to this uh, black hole in the center. Yeah, it's already lensing, so this is a pretty fair sized black hole. Oh, there it is. And there is the supermassive black hole in the center of this galaxy. Let's go ahead and hit play and see how fast it's spinning. Okay, so right now is real time. I don't see really any movement with it. Let's go ahead and speed it up to 1,000 times, and there is a black hole spinning. Let's just see the stars orbit around it. Nonetheless, really cool find. I have not seen a planetary nebula in this game, and they actually look pretty cool. Anyways, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the next thing.
Okay, so I'm just gonna go in the search function. Let's see what I can find. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's go check out something that the Kepler telescope has seen. Let's go to Kepler 1083. Uh, okay, I need the pause game. Okay, so we have a standard orange dwarf right here. Let's see what planets are around it. Um, looks like just a single gas giant, which actually resembles Jupiter. That looks a lot like Jupiter. I don't know if the uh, gas or atmosphere composition is the same, but it certainly looks like Jupiter. It's even got a big storm, but it's just not red. Oh, wow. That's actually getting very detailed as I fly into it, too. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Uh, wow. Let's see, the surface temperature of this planet is 128 degrees. And, oh wow, if I actually fly into this, it's kind of messed, like the render's a bit glitchy, but this is actually all three dimensional. That is really cool. I did not know that was actually a thing. You can actually fly through, like, the cloud layer, but it's kind of transparent and kind of bugging out in the distance there, as you can tell, like over here. That's a really cool little planet. Well, let's go ahead and move on to a different star. Let's check the search function again and see what we can find. So here is 108. Let's go to that. It is a star, particularly a yellow dwarf, just like our planet. But it looks like we have Kepler 108c, which is a planet this thing's potentially observed, which has rings. Really nice, like purple and greenish rings like the ones over there are kind of grayish green and these ones are purple with a lovely blue planet and let's see if we can actually fly into the cloud layer just like the previous planet okay it doesn't seem to want to render the same way yeah it doesn't look all like three-dimensional I don't think no I mean it's a little bit but not nearly as much so that's a shame Let's check out Kepler 108b. Which is another gas giant, but uh, this one's kind of pale. It doesn't really look all that great. Uh, let's go ahead and fly towards the storm again. Yeah, again, it does not really have much of a 3D effect. This one has a kind of... Uh, well, I mean, of course the atmosphere is dense, but... Uh, it has like an outer atmosphere that really uh, fogs up the outside of it. So that was a uh, kind of a cool little gas giant. Let's see if we can find something manually. Like, I think this is a star cluster. No, this is actually a white main sequence star. Let's uh, go visit this. It's a randomly generated star, and we got a vertical gas giant with the ring facing vertical to. Uh, the plane of the star's orbit. Let's uh, zoom in. And we have this beautiful purple glow. Oh, we have that awesome 3D effect too. Let's go ahead and see if I can slow down a little bit and just fly towards this. Okay, so this one's really glitchy looking, but that's actually really cool. I didn't know that these were actually 3D, I figured it was just a texture mapped over the planet itself. And as I get close, you can see it's like really detailed, we have this beautiful like purple glow. This is a really cool looking planet, and there is the parenting star. Let's go ahead and zero out the magnitude and the exposure, make sure everything's set properly. And that's actually a really cool find. We have what looks like a temperate Oceania over here. So that oh i was gonna say it has that brown tint to it that we usually see but no this one's i mean it kind of does have it on the edges there but this is really purple <laughs> it is 10 degrees celsius so this is actually definitely capable of harboring life as for why it doesn't i don't really know probably something bad in the water but yeah and if i go into the atmosphere we get a Beautiful looking little sunset. Actually, no, this is just the color of the atmosphere. This is not a sunset. Let's see what the uh, sunset looks like on this planet.
Okay, so we got a really detailed cloud layer. That looks really nice from above. And let's just slowly zoom in and try not to go underwater this time. There we go. And the sunset is actually a kind of vibrant pink slash hellish red with a kind of orange fade going on. Just looks dark black. See the cloud layer above it. And this is actually really cool looking. I've, I've not actually seen a Oceania with like this uh, kind of effect going on. This is actually a really cool looking sunset. Very alien, I guess. Let's see if there's something else I can find. Can I see any other stars? I see something over here. Let's click on that. I think, oh, okay, that's just another planet. Is that the same planet I was just at? No, this is definitely a different planet. It has a very compact ring, but as you can tell, a lot of its rings have already condensed into moons around this uh, gas giant. And let's just go ahead and zoom in and see if we can get that cloud effect again. Let's uh, slow down our velocity. This is a pretty big gas giant. And no, it does not appear to have like the uh, 3D effect with its gas layer, and also the outer atmosphere of it is not very dense because it's actually uh, faded out quite a bit. And we have some beautiful, very compact purple rings. And I wonder if I could actually see the... Asteroid that is... Uh... No, I can't, I can't find the one that's actually cleaning up that center area of the rings. We got a blue moon over here. Let's go ahead and check this out. It is a cool desert, and it is very blue. It's got a nice little purple hue to it. On top of that, the clouds look almost purplish. Actually, once I get closer, they look a little bit orange. Let's go check out these snowy mountains over here. We got the beautiful aurora in the background. And the atmosphere is pretty dense. We got a beautiful view of these mountains. That rendered out really nicely. Except for the clouds there. The clouds kind of got a little bit of something going on. But yeah, these are definitely some beautiful looking mountains. Let's check it out from the side. There we go. Bit of a mapping issue right there, but nonetheless, this looks great. The terrain is, uh... I want to say those are potentially like ice sheet like the planet is negative 41 degrees celsius so yeah these are probably this is probably like cracked ice sheets and then we have like snow on the top up here I pan around let's see oh wow okay yeah let's get let's try to get a lovely view here of the gas giant in the background and you can just see the, like these snowy mountains let's go below the cloud layer I uh, can't seem to get a good view. There we go. That is an awesome view of this gas giant. And if you want to actually visit this planet yourself, the ID is up here in the top left corner. Anyways, and my goal to keep these videos short, I'm going to end it here. If you like the video, leave it a like, and it'd be very appreciated if you subscribe. If you want to actually check out this game for yourself, it is completely free, and I'll have a link down in the description. Anyways, I'll see you guys later.